Hi everyone, my name is Sue Jenkins. I'm a freelance graphic design web UI UX designer at LuckyChair.com. I'm a web course developer for LinkedIn Learning and I'm an associate professor of art at Marywood University in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Really nice to have you joining with me today. Uh, so in this lightning talk, I'm going to share about my ever developing blogger onboarding process for my school's student art department WordPress blog, which is called WhereCreativityWorks.com. And more specifically, as the blog's sole editor-in-chief since I started it about seven years ago, I want to talk about how I transitioned from in-person, one-on-one training to mostly virtual blogger training, which saved me a huge amount of time while also making the training process more effective. So the improvements that I've made to the onboarding process over the years include things like creating documents and email templates, recording training videos, developing a bank of reusable comments and feedback statements, and generally making spreadsheets to track all of the blogger role commitments. So let's just jump right in and I'll share briefly how I found the best solution for every need along the way and had fun in the process. And surprise, there is a, a new twist at the end of this talk. Okay, so uh, I'll begin by telling you briefly about the blog itself. It was an idea that I developed in late 2014 to jumpstart my department's recruitment efforts through social outreach. And the way it works essentially is that a selected group of student bloggers, they'll all generate content by each writing once a week, like 250 words minimum, um, writing about their experiences, about what it's like to study art at my institution. So everyone would be turning in their posts on Sunday, and then I would sit down and schedule them for publication, do my editor duties, check for spelling, all that kind of stuff, and then schedule them for publication throughout the week. And then through the magic of social linking, all the posts are simultaneously shared on WordPress, and Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr for wider reach. Oh, um, but things started to change over time. What started as seven blogger roles eventually grew into 17 roles. And then we have a guest um, faculty blogger and sometimes do alumni stories. So it can fluctuate the number of posts that we have each month. And then, you know, I've tried to shift away from in-person training to like individual training to group training and then asynchronous training. Uh, and then each of the bloggers would commit for one, two or three co consecutive semesters, including summers and winter break and everything. But because there was so much flexibility, because because we want to make it easy on the students, there's also a lot of turnover, which means that I need to do training at the beginning and at the end and sometimes in the middle of every semester, every semester and sometimes during the summer. It's kind of a lot to manage. So um, here's like a cheesy visual that kind of shows you a better sense of like all the individual steps that I was taking with every student to try and keep track of all the moving parts. It's a lot Lot of work uh, just to recruit the students and gauge their interest and train them and really make sure that they're ready to commit uh, and then onboard them through the blog manually and then do my role as editor-in-chief and send out reminders when they forget because they always forget um, and then checking in with them at the beginning and the end of each semester. Do you want to continue? Are you ready to pass the baton? Uh, and just tracking all the blogger roles, making sure everybody gets everything done on time and then picking up the training. Okay, so you get the idea. It's like a lot, you know, too many steps. So uh, what I've essentially been doing now is streamlining my process to try and make it as efficient as possible. So this is like my new kind of roadmap, which is simpler and much more effective. So let me tr tell you like the process. So the first thing that I did, my first improvement from individual one-on-one -on -one training was to gather all of the new bloggers into one room at a time. This was pre-COVID um, so that I can train them as a group, answer all of their questions, and learning in a group environment is often better, especially learning uh, new tools like WordPress. So doing that really streamlined things. I Less of me saying the same thing over and over again. So like that was the first main thing. But I still felt that that was inefficient because again, I'm having to do this two, three, sometimes four or five times a semester, which is not a good use of my time personally. The next thing I did was I started to, um, and I would say this is probably my most effective tool, was I started recording videos of the training. Everything that I would have said to a student 
student or a group of students in person, I recorded myself saying so that when it's time to train somebody new, I could just send them the links to the videos and they can watch them, which is so much faster and easier. So like this complete shifted me to 100% training, like no more in-person training unless somebody happens to see me in the hallway and they need a help, in which case I would obviously help them. Um, and then, you know, I, I always check whenever I implement something new, it's part of my role as a teacher, like how is it working? Everyone that I polled about doing it, it with video training versus in-person training said they preferred the video training, but they liked it because they could go back and re-watch and re-listen and it was more effective for them to spend more time and not have to worry about taking notes. So cool. Uh, another thing that I implemented was email templates and we use Gmail at my university and Gmail has this cool thing where you can create these templates. One thing I do is if somebody leaves a comment, then I will email the student and say, woohoo, you got a comment and please respond to the comment as quickly as possible. And you'll find the link at the bottom of your post page. And I didn't want to have to say that over and over again. So I just typed it out once, saved it as a template, and I can easily access it and use it every time. You know, the only thing I have to customize is the student name. And then another thing was I sent out a welcome packet to new bloggers after I gauge their interest and they watch an introduction video and say, yes, they want to continue. Then I send them all my training videos and a welcome packet that says, here's what you need to do. Um, but having a template and then plugging in those details is so much more efficient um, with an email template. So that's really good. And then the last thing is with the blog management, I was doing everything by hand and obviously that's inefficient. Um, so that was like the first year. And then the second year, I moved everything into Google Docs, Google, Google Sheets. So everything is online and accessible whenever I need it. So I have spreadsheets to track the blogger start and end dates and the number of semesters they have committed to and also I check in with them to make sure that they still want to continue in case they change their mind what their roles are what their publication dates and times are and when their due dates are so tracking all that really helps me be a more efficient editor-in-chief these are all like totally great improvements and I'm like yeah really happy that I did all these things because they save time and they help make my role way more efficient but part of my job as a teacher like I'm always on the lookout for more efficient systems and ways that I can further streamline my workflow. So from there, I decided to look at the onboarding process with fresh eyes with the intention of discovering what else might benefit from automation. So three items quickly emerged. The first one was promoting the blogging opportunities, or in other words, like finding potential bloggers. I used to do this entirely in person, and I was able to shift this almost completely to email. Email. So then depending, once I send out my email inquiry, depending on what the student's response is, I can continue that conversation by email using some of my automated messaging to streamline that process. Ideally, I'd love that whole thing to be automated with like intelligent intelligent agents um, to do something like that. So I get their interest, I get their commitment, I send them the rest of the training, give them their due date, and then they just get started. So like all this is asynchronous email, which makes it easier for me and makes it easier easy for the student. Now, I mentioned my welcome packet that putting that as an email template was a huge, huge enhancement instead of like copying, pasting from a Word document, highlighting the certain parts that need to be customized also helps me streamline and move through that faster. Definitely the automated Gmail responses are like awesome. Okay. So like here's where I was going to end the talk, to, like give you a tidy little recap of the efficiencies that I created along the way. But um, thanks to COVID, thanks COVID, my school actually threw some fresh constraints at the blog like two weeks before school started. And um, that kind of changed everything. And I wanted to include this in this talk because this is life, stuff happens. And I thought it would be useful to share how I'm dealing with it and have been and am dealing with. Okay, here's what happened. And here's what the twist is. The higher ups decided that the art blog was publishing too often. And instead of twice a day, they want it to drop down to only once a day. Furthermore, they said the blog really should be converted into a student run club with faculty sponsorship, but way less faculty involvement than the current like five to eight hours per month that I've been donating of my personal time. Like suddenly <laughs> two weeks before school starts, I have the task of pretty much changing everything about the way that I run the blog and train my bloggers 
et cetera, et cetera. But thankfully, I have a little system for things like this. So with any change, I like to look for opportunities to improve the workflows. Like that's a really good starting place for me. So I outlined where I could take the blog from here. And then I simultaneously did a little research like pondering, did anyone already make an onboarding plugin for WordPress that might work for this kind of blogging situation? And if you know, please tell me. Okay, so where do we go from here? From here, new publication calendar uh, in Instead of twice a day, which meant everyone was posting weekly, uh, we have to drop down to twice per month. So I created a new calendar. Every other week, somebody submits a post and that I would love to develop some kind of automated reminder email system so that I can remind everyone about five days before their post is due because half of them forget. Okay, the second thing was more training on demand. I would love to continue recording videos as needed when certain questions come up. I'll record a specific video like, how do I insert a gallery again? Like, oh, here's the gallery video, watch this one. So continue creating more videos, but I would love to develop some kind of automated reminder so that when they forget to add their category or deselect uncategorized or input their, their tags, or forget to put in um, their featured image. I would love reminders so that they remember how to do all that. And then the last thing is, and this is sort of my call to all of you, I would love, absolutely love to collaborate on the development of a WordPress plugin. Like that would be my long range goal so that, um, you know, some kind of system like this could handle the way my scenario was at the beginning, but also could adapt to the way the scenario is trying to shake out now uh, and, you know, be customizable for everybody else's blog. So if you are a developer and think that this might be something interesting you'd want to work on and collaborate with, please reach out to me and let's start a conversation. Thank you again for joining me today. And here's all my details if you want to get in touch. Thanks so much for watching.